Go ahead, Rich. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Kansas offense and this straight 11 that you've seen all year. Fred, what do they do? Well, they got more 12 to them. You know, they're going to, really? yeah, and uh, they're going to, you know, try to play, <coughs> you know, somewhat like what we do. I mean, they, they, they like some power, power plays and two-back offense. And, uh, you know, Les Miles has been that way since he was at LSU. So, I mean, I think there's a mixture of stuff in there. And defensively, they use the 3-4. They uh, do. What, getting your offensive line ready for that. Yeah, we've been getting our, our defense plays in 3-4. So we've seen it all camp. We've been preparing for 3-4. This is pretty common to us right now. And, you know, they'll give some, you know, some four down looks out of 3-4. But, I mean, I think we're, we're ready for that. You're always looking for some balance and pass and run, but it looks like it's almost two to one run right now. It's just, just because that's been the formula for success. And well, it's a little bit of the nature of who we play. Yeah. That wasn't the formula against Virginia Tech. That might have been the formula against Richmond. And it was only because, you know, you play two quarters of football, and then in the end, you're taking the starters out of the game, put the young guys in, you're trying to let them run the ball a little bit. I mean, that's just a statistical byproduct of that. That's not – look at the Virginia Tech game, dissect what that is. That's going to be what we're going to be. The challenge uh, with Kansas this week and how important this game is. Well, I mean, it's uh, – very big challenge with Kansas. They're, they're, they're a Power 5 team. They've got some talented players on the roster. Obviously, it's a new program. They're trying to get their, their, their program and their schematics in. Um, but they have some dynamic guys. And uh, for us, uh, it's, it's the next game. And it gives us an opportunity to get the three and up. And uh, these are critical. Every game's critical. In college football today, you know, it's like not like pros anymore. Like pro football, you know, there's, you can lose a few games. You lose a few games in college football. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. So every game is precious. And this is a precious game here on Friday night in our stadium. What do you like about your team so far this year? I mean, I think this is a team that uh, loves football. They're a pretty tough team. Um, they're fun to coach. Uh, they're an explosive team. I think we're playmaking capability on, on defense and on offense. We have a lot of explosive players. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to be around. Uh, every day of practice, you got guys that are locked in. Just that makes uh, coaching enjoyable. Doing a feature on uh, Tate and Tyler. And yeah, guys. sure. Um, talk about Tyler. Talk about both of them as football players yeah. right now. So Tate, uh, Tate came in here as a quarterback, uh, transitioned to be a corner back, and um, really is a gifted athlete. He's a six foot guy, 195, 198 pounds, close to 200 pounds. Very athletic. He saw that unbelievably athletic interception he made last week. Um, he has really grown up like this guy is really mature. His approach to the game is very mature. And I think you've just seen the very beginning of a spectacular career. Tyler Vrabel is a redshirt freshman. He's another guy. I mean, both these guys were not highly recruited guys. I mean, uh, Vrabel came in here and uh, he's got great feet, um, really, really athletic, really good measurables, loves football, tough as heck. And he's a redshirt freshman. And he's in here starting right now. I mean, they both, you're talking about two guys that have very high ceilings and will have a great opportunity to play beyond college. When you see guys like that, obviously they're dads. Yeah. You know, having football dads, what does that do for them? What does it do for you when you look at them as a recruit? Well, I love, you know, um, sons of coaches, sons of football guys, you know, and, and, and I mean, it can be positive, I guess. Uh, I mean, I think it's very positive. Sometimes it can be overbearing. It's not in this case. These are two dads that, you know, are awesome guys, you know, they're to be your, I mean, you know, uh, Mike is an unbelievable, you know, they're both Mikes, <laughs> Mike and Mike, they're unbelievable guys. I mean, they love football, but they're not in the way, they're not hovering, they're just love ball guys, and they've done a great job with their sons. I mean, each, it's funny, each kid really kind of, you can see the reflection of their fathers and their father's personality in their kids. It, it's kind of obvious, you know, which is a good thing, right? You know, um, Tate is kind of meticulous and kind of, you know, really methodical about his approach. And I, I get this, the, the opinion that, you know, Mike was like that. And, uh, and, and Tyler, you know, is, is, looks like, you know, he's got, you know, he's got that wild man side to him. And, you know, you know he loves it, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, you, you can see his dad in there. You know, I mean, you know, Mike Rabel is a, a ball guy, you know. I mean, both dads, I mean, just, you're making me think because I wouldn't think about this until right. you just said it. Those are real ball guys, and their kids are ball kids, so it's fun. And, uh, you know, they're both high-end players. I mean, they both play for anybody in the country, for sure. Awesome, Coach. Thanks. Yeah.